G'day folks, welcome back. Well, we've got something a little bit different for you this time. We're uh, currently at a place called Lorna Glen. It's a conservation reserve um, right in the middle of Western Australia. So it's 850 kilometres northeast of Perth, uh, or about 600 kilometres north of Kalgoorlie. And if you know Western Australia, there's a little town called Waluna, thriving metropolis of Waluna. We're about 160 kilometres east of Waluna. So um, Lorna Glen is an old pastoral lease. Uh, they started farming here in about the 1930s, both sheep and cattle. They also tried to grow some uh, grains here as well, unsuccessfully unfortunately. And that continued right through until the year 2000 where it was just unviable and the station was then handed back. Um, it was part of a native title claim by the Matu people who are the uh, traditional custodians in this region here and uh, they have actually reached an agreement with Parks and Wildlife to manage this property. Um, Parks and Wildlife have set it up as a conservation reserve. They've fenced off the entire property. It's about 260,000 square or 260,000 hectares, just over half a million acres um, and that's all fenced off and then they have an internal compound that's 1,150 hectares, so two and a half thousand acres, um, which is also protected by a more secure um, electric fence. And they've managed to eradicate all the ferals out of there, the foxes and dogs and cats and all that sort of stuff. Um, and they're reintroducing native species back into there and trying to breed them so that they can then relocate them uh, once they get to a, a decent number. So at the moment they've got, um, they've got booties, mala, bandicoots, and a few of the other smaller um, local desert marsupials. So, um, and they go in there and they, uh, there's actually a bunch of researchers here at the moment. So they go in there and they, um, they trap the animals and then they measure them. They're all microchips so they can keep track of them as well. It's really interesting stuff. So our duties here as caretakers um, include doing the perimeter fence checks. They're electric fences and uh, you'll see a fair bit about that. Uh, there's camels on the property and the camels wreak havoc with the fences. Um, they're a nightmare. Um, we also look after bits and pieces around the homestead, just general maintenance and um, cleaning and tidying up around there. And um, general maintenance inside the compound as well on the electric fences and also um, the cameras. Uh, we um, check the cameras and uh, download all the data from the cameras as well amongst a million other things that we do. So it's a really exciting spot. We're here for the entire month of September and uh, we've been here for about a week already and it's been great. So before we get into what we've been up to here at Lorna Glen or Matua, uh, we'll show you a little bit about tr our trip down from Exmouth. So we headed down from Exmouth, it's about 1,350 kilometers from Exmouth down to Lorna Glen uh, and we did that over three days. So I'll show you a bit about our road trip down here and then we'll get into what we've been up to here at the homestead or at the station. And uh, as I said, we've had a ball so far. We've got uh, another few weeks to go yet. But um, I hope you enjoy it. Something a little bit different. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy our uh, adventures here at Lorna Glen or Matua. So we're on our way to Lorna Glen, or Matua as it's called nowadays, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get there. But today we're uh, just at Gascoigne Junction. We left Exmouth yesterday, Cape Range National Park, had beautiful eight days there, and a big day yesterday just on 600 kilometres, and we're now at Gascoigne Junction. And um, this is the Gascoigne Junction Roadhouse. There's also a pub attached to that with a great beer garden at the back and a swimming pool and playground for the kids and a terrific little caravan park which is just at the back of the pub and they've got everything here they've got little chalets they've got uh, ensuite powered sites caravan sites um, we've also got some really nice hard stand sites with big concrete pads and uh, some grassy sites unpowered and powered. We're over in the uh, powered grassy site. It's $5 cheaper than the hard stand for some reason. But um, yeah, this is a really lovely little surprise. So Gascoigne Junction is just at the gateway to the Kennedy Range National Park. It's about another 60k from here up to uh, Temple Gorge camping area. So these are the ensuite sites. Nice and shady as you can see. And this is us here in the powered camping area. 
which is fine. Nice and grassy, a little bit of shade, perfect. Mm. I think I just did the last 15 minutes and didn't record anything. <laughs> Here's my beautiful wife with her newly washed hair. <laughs> After uh, eight days at Cape Range. So, um, where are we off to today? We're off to Mekathara. So it's another 450k today, most of that on dirt roads. So, um, we're hoping the roads are in good condition. We have um, outrunning the rain again. Believe it or not, there's a... Uh, low pressure system that's heading in uh, crossing the coast somewhere near Carnarvon on Friday and uh, there's all sorts of flood warnings out at the moment for uh, the Gascoigne region but hopefully we're in front of it by by a day or so so we shouldn't catch us with a bit of luck <laughs> we hope. Got a hand with that? Sorry I could do some work. So this is the new memorial that they've built here at Gascoigne Junction up and have a look and see what the uh, what the little aeroplane is all about but they've got a little stage just here Lisa's gonna pop up there and sing a couple of songs sure beautiful grass so there we go so the uh, little Cessna there is uh, one of the first planes that they used to uh, use for mustering cattle but this area is great so what they've done over here they've put in a day stop so you can pull in with your caravan and there's little sun shelters there have a bit of a picnic so it looks like the uh, tables and chairs are yet to go in so there's still a bit of work to do he's saying that they've got a big concert here in October I'm trying to get it all finished by October I'll just come up and show you the um, Anzac Memorial here this is worth a look as well so this is the um, Anzac Memorial how cool little school just here doesn't seem to be much happening at the school today. I don't know how many people are at the school. Okay, well that's it. Gascoigne Junction. If you're up this way, don't drive past. Stop in, spend the night, have a meal in the pub, try and keep these little towns viable. So all the roads are opened at the moment, but uh, tomorrow would be a different story, I'd say, if that rain comes in. So uh, we're headed for the Landor Mekathara Road. 450k. Rightio. Let's go. So we're almost halfway. In fact, we're pretty close to halfway. Um, we've just finished the Dalgetty Downs Road and have a look. Bitchman. You've got to love bitumen. But it's not all bitumen, only the last 20k was bitumen. But I'm looking back towards Mekathara and it looks like there might be a fair bit of bitumen going that way as well. So here we are, Mekathara, 239 kilometres to the south and Mount Augustus, 100 kilometres to the north. And uh, this is the Mount Augustus now what it's called, Landor Mekathara Road, we're on now. So there we go. 211 kilometres from Gascoigne Junction. Just see if there's any disaster in the van -o. See how things look. How's it looking in here? Dusty. A little bit dusty. I can imagine so couple of phantom screws. We seem to find phantom screws a lot. We put them in a jar and hope one day that we'll figure out where they came from. All right, lunch time. So we're still on the uh, Mekathara Road from Mount Augusta to Mekathara Road. I think it's called the Carnarvon Mekathara Road or the Gascoigne Mekathara Road, something like that. Anyway, road to Mekathara. We uh, were teased with a little bit of bitumen just as we turned off the Dalgany Downs Road, but it only lasted about 10k and then it turned back into, into dirt. But it's still pretty good dirt road. It's not too bad at all. Corrugations are not too bad. So we just got a big truck coming at us here. This is the scary bit with the stones flying. We've got about a dozen stone chips in the windscreen. I think you need to move over a bit. Yeah, move over a bit. Give this guy a little bit of room. He's not slowing down. He's not slowing down. Far, Far out. out. Jesus. <laughs> Luckily.
luckily it's a really windy day so the dust has blown off the road straight away but you can imagine on a day where there's no wind it would take minutes for the dust to settle looks like there's another one coming as well Thankfully, as I said, the wind is blowing the dust off the road, so it clears pretty quickly. What have we got left? We've got another 120k to go to get to Megan now, so we're almost there. Put our podcast back on. Yep. Podcast. The world of the Bible. <laughs> okay, we're here. 450 dusty kilometres. We're uh, camped in a place called Peace Gorge, which is really nice. It's a lot of rock formations. Just on the outskirts of Mekathara. Only 6k out of town, I think it is. 4k out of town. So just de-dusting the van. <laughs> Lots of dust. Lots of dust. It was a very, very dusty road. But um, it's okay, it's only dust. We can sweep it up. So uh, we won't be too fussy, you still got a bit of dust to do tomorrow. Um, on the way through to Waluna and then out to um, Lorna Glen, so uh, we'll just give it a quick tidy up and uh, boil the kettle. What time is it? 4.30. Oh, maybe we don't have time to boil the kettle. Might be straight into the vino. Anyway, a couple of flies. <laughs> She's alright. We're good. We're good. All good. All good. Okay, where's the wine? We're uh, on our way out of Mika, heading for Waluna, 183 kilometres along the Goldfields Highway. Out to Waluna, it's a chilly start to the day. Freezing cold, it's only about um, 13 degrees I think this morning. Looking very ominous, that uh, rain depression is uh, on its way without a doubt. Let's be the Mika Dara race course. So yeah, 180 kilometres to Waluna and then uh, another 150 or 160 I think it is from Waluna. sets in so the forecast is for a substantial amount of rain starting tomorrow out our way. Anyway here we go. So we're off the bitumen. It didn't last very long. Oh, okay. Off the bitumen onto the gravel. Oh well. Oh well. Gravel roads in general have been extremely good. I'm quite impressed with them so hopefully this will be a little bit more of the same. Hopefully you just haven't jinxed it. Yeah, Oops. Okay well we uh, made it to Waluna. The road between uh, Mika and Waluna was actually really good. Not too bad at all. And here we are at the start of the Gun Barrel Highway. We're, uh, we're not going to be doing much of it. <laughs> Only a few K of the Gun Barrel Highway. But um, yeah, so I think the turn off we're about 40 or 50 K from the turn off. Um, and then we head up on Lake Violet Road, I think it's called. Anyway, start of the Gun Barrel Highway. There you go, you hear a lot about that, but uh, for us, no, nah, we're not doing it. So here we are, we're uh, at the turn off. Turn off to Lorna Glen, 37k into the station. It's been a long, dusty road. <laughs> a little bit nervous about looking inside the van. But anyway, only 37k to go and we'll be there. Looking forward to a cup of tea, that's for sure. Tired yet? Yeah. So today we're grading the roads. We've got Captain Lisa driving today. Manual, haven't done it in years. Haven't driven a manual car. <laughs> Picked it up straight away. Good job there, Lisa. So, uh, so it's one hell of a driveway, 37 kilometers long. Um, we've done about probably a third of it. So uh, we're just coming back on the return section of the first third. And then we've got another, uh, another two thirds to do, which is probably the worst bit. 
but it desperately needs it. So we had a lot of rain last night, six mils of rain, which was fantastic. But the roads are a little bit wet leading out to the um, perimeter fence, so we're not going to do the perimeter fence today. We'll do that tomorrow. There's, um, we did a fair bit of it yesterday, or one eighth of it yesterday. It still took us five hours to do. Um, and we found a section that had been knocked over by camels, about 200 metres of it laying flat, so that took us a fair while to uh, stand back up. But there was still no electricity to it, so we've got to try and find out where the fault is. But that's on the furthest corner of the property is where the exciter is, and uh, so we'll go out and have a look at that tomorrow. Anyway, not far to go now, only about another 10 kilometres we'll be back at the station. And turn around and go back again. <laughs> Hell of a driveway to maintain, that's for sure. I'm glad I'm not sweeping it. Rightio, grading's done for the day. We got 75% uh, of it done of the 37 kilometre road. We might do the last little bit in the next couple of days. So we just thought we'd um, stop and have a look at the shearing sheds. The old shearing sheds. I'll find out when this was actually a, a live station or a working station. I'll put a little caption in. But um, these are quite large sheds, these. Look at that. Looks a bit more modern than um, a bit more modern than Ballara, that's for sure. fluorescent lights and things so obviously wasn't that long ago that they finished shearing in the shed here Be interesting to find out when that all finished so do you know what this was back in the company car. So we're running down our uh, nicely graded road that we did yesterday. Thank you to the grader driver. No problem. She did a fantastic job. Heading down to the compound today, we're doing the external fence checks on the compound fence and uh, make sure there's no breaches and nothing's trying to dig underneath it or uh, climb over the top of it and that there's power running all the way around it. So, um, and then turn the power off. Well, they have turned the power off, but we can turn the power back on. So the first job today, this job is down at the compound. So now we've got to test the voltage on the wire. 8.2 8 8 on the top 2. taking the readings and now we're just doing a perimeter check make sure nothing's dug under the fence or climbed over the top of it or breached the wire so here we go just drive along the fence at least I'm driving I'll do the looking so inside the compound they're breeding um, uh, three types at the moment. They've got booties and marlows and bandicoots. Marla, marlas and bandicoots. And if you don't know what a booty or a marla is, uh, I'll stick a photo in and show you because we had no idea what a booty or a marla was. But uh, they did have bilbies here up until about three or four years ago and then all the bilbies have been relocated. So now it's just those three. Marlas, booties and bandicoots. So these are the sort of things that we're looking for on the fence. You can see the um, cable ties broken. I think the sun just perishes them. Between every upright there should be three cable ties. So there's none at all on this little bit of wire. 
right, so we'll just have to uh, re-secure that one. Looks like there's not on that bit either. Okay. But you have to turn it all off. Don't no, no. Just don't touch it. <laughs> no. You can't turn it off because the turn-off points. Well, you're not doing there. them today. Then. No, you can't. It's no. plastic. No. No, that's how you do them. No. Trust me. No. I'm an electrician. complete no electrocutions electric fence zero and one and these are the holes we're looking at um, underneath the fence you can see they've dug through this side but they haven't come out on the other side so that shows that they haven't got through Let's see. So the score is electric fence two, <laughs> Andrew one. <laughs> and I don't need to reheart my start now. <laughs> to oh. re what? I start my heart. <laughs> Far out. So uh, we've just like shit. we've just readjusted Lisa's uh, heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> and it burnt my finger. Yeah, grizzling. Okay, roll on, McDuck. Oh, I'm staying in the car now. <laughs> so finally, after two really good jolts we're now using the glove that's been on the, on the dashboard we should have thought about it earlier <laughs> <laughs> so we found our fence problem this morning there was a, uh, a short between the wire and the actual fence itself did a little bit of re reading last night actually read the manual and there was a fault finding tip there so uh, they've said have a look and see where your strongest current is flowing and walk in that direction until you find there's no current flowing and your faults somewhere around there so that's what we did found it within two minutes fantastic so now we're on the way out to the main road and then we're heading up to the problem we've got on the northeastern corner up at isolator number 18 if you're wondering um, so it's about 50 odd K from here, so uh, we're going to see what's going on up there. My guess is that the fence has been knocked down. Anyway, my You're loving the car. <laughs> Lisa just said she wants to buy one of these Land Cruisers. Like the luxury version that we have is not good enough for her, she wants one of these old buckets. It's so much fun. <laughs> they are a lot of fun. Radio, off to isolator number eight. So this is the road out to the breakaway that we're uh, heading towards Energizer number eight. Got about another 10k to go. It's about 25 kilometers from the main road, if you want to call it a main road. There's the chauffeur. She's doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Just have a look at this fence here. And it's, you know, once again, I'm in awe of these guys that made, you know, open up this country. There's just these fence posts that would have cut five strands of wire, fairly low, so that must have been sheep country. But for 30, 40 kilometers from the road, this fence runs, five strands of wire. Unbelievable. All right, got to keep going. It's doing a fair bit of ground to cover just yet. How you going there, boss? Good. Doing a great job, really good job. Heaps of budgies out here. Okay, keep going. So we're still on the way down to uh, number eight, and we just the fence is a mess, absolute mess. So it looks like the camels have been through here. You can see the top wire is broken, and uh, so we'll have to repair that, see if we can get that a little bit straighter, and then keep working our way down the road, down to Energizer number eight. But anyway, we've got to fix this bit first. Fence repair. Good old Google for a um, bit of info on these. We had no idea how to use these. <laughs> so uh, we mucked around for ages trying to figure out how to use them and then uh, came back and had a bit, did a bit of Googling and sure enough, here we go. So we're at the end of the run. We're at the uh, top of the breakaway country now. Can't go any further in the car, but the fault is just behind us somewhere, just in some rocky country there, so we'll have to do that little bit on foot. 
and uh, find out what's going on back there. But I'll just uh, take you up to the edge of the drop off here and show you it's quite, quite pretty scenery. Quite pretty just looking at Lisa, but we've all seen hours and hours of footage of Lisa's back. <laughs> There we go, on the edge of the breakaway. You can see um, straight ahead of us here, the fence line continues. We did that section of fence line. Um, when was that? It been Sunday. Sunday last week. And they fixed up a heap of broken fence down that way. Camels had knocked over. today <laughs> still recovering from my 8500 volt shock <laughs> and I'm almost full moon oh yeah full moon never, never good okay well let's see if we can find this fault and um, start making our way back so it takes a couple of hours to get home and then we go back on the way yeah and then we got to go all the way down the driveway again to the letterbox because the mailman comes this afternoon What's that? 37, so 60, 74 kilometre. 74 kilometre round trip to the letterbox. Check the mail. <laughs> to check the mail. There better be something in the letterbox, that's for sure. Okay, grab some tools and we'll have a wander back through the rocks. See if we can find this last little fault. So repairs are done. It's all working fine now, so we're on our way home. Have a look how pretty it is out there. It's a shame the sun's not shining. Pretty stretch of country. Okay, so all we have to do is whack a few droppers on the way home, try and straighten them up. And when the uh, cable is broken, they all get a little bit skew with. So uh, just get those straightened up on the way back to the main drag and then uh, head home. Looking forward to a cover. Homeward bound. So I might just wrap it up there. Been rambling on for long enough, I think. But there's still quite a lot of stuff to uh, to see in our uh, adventures out here at the station. By the way, the chopper here is um, here for the guys doing research on wedgetail eagles. They've been out flying around the property, um, having a look at the nests, and they've had a great day today. They've actually had. Um, I think three nests with chicks in them, which was um, quite unusual, so they're very excited. But anyway, like I said, I'll wrap it all up um, and I'll have to do another episode. So uh, I'll get to work on that in the next few days. So I hope you enjoyed it so far and uh, hope you come back and join us in episode two of our adventures out here at Lorna Glen. Mm -hmm.